Hello and welcome to Scientist Habit of Mind screencast. I just want to give a, a shout out to uh, Paul Anderson for um, really kind of um, giving me a model to go after for um, all of my screencasts. So if it looks a little similar um, to his, you know, you, you, when you start doing these things, um, you, you kind of want to model it after someone else. Don't reinvent um, reinvent the wheel. So hopefully mine will take on their own personality as, as we go on and cover new material. But uh, if you guys want to check it out, um, Paul Anderson's his name. It's on YouTube. He's got, um, I think, he, um, the name Bozeman Science. And he's got a lot of good uh, screencasts. Well, anyway, let's, uh, let's get started. So today we're going to uh, learn about the scientist's habit of mind. And they are creative and imaginative, ethic, eth, ethically, sorry, not ethnically, but ethically responsible, curious, skeptical, intellectual honesty, and open to new ideas. Um, this concept map kind of lays it out. It's kind of good for you guys to um, take a look at it. It's, uh, it's in your textbook. Um, concept maps can really help you guys um, uh, learn the material. So let's look at the first one, which is uh, being curious. Some of you may recognize this lady. This is uh, Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall studied chimpanzees for 30 years. If you are studying something for 30 years and trying to learn um, more about it, such as she wanted to learn more about the, um, the way chimpanzees lived, um, how they lived in a community, the things that they ate, um, so on and so forth, you've got to be curious to spend 30 years. So Jane Goodall is a really good example of that. And you can read, read up on her. Um, she's a very famous um, scientist. The next one um, would be scientists have to be skeptical. And Rachel Carson is a really good example of that. Um, she was very skeptical that the pesticides being used this is back in the 50s. So the pesticides being used, um, uh, namely DDT, um, which was used to kill insects, uh, mainly for agriculture. She was skeptical that those pesticides may also kill other living things. So she did a lot of research and she ended up writing a book um, called The Silent Silent something. So I'll have to um, get back to you guys on that. Um, well, as a matter of fact, let me just kind of cheat and go back to my notes. Um, Silent Spring, sorry about that. Silent Spring, which really brought a lot of awareness um, to the use of DDT. As a matter of fact, um, it was finally banned. I think it took a while for them to finally ban it, but um, because of her research and being skeptical, um, it was finally banned. And you know that those those pesticides actually had long um, term effects. Uh, a lot of fishers still have the the DDT toxins um, in in them. Um, where I used to fish as a kid, um, I was down there. This is at the uh, Cabrillo Pier down in San Pedro. I was down there. Oh, it's probably been about maybe three years since I've been down there. But they had signs all over the place about how the fish. Um, can have DDT and PCBs um, in them, and uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't eat those fish. So thank goodness for her um, research. Scientists also have to be open to new ideas. This picture really kind of sums it up. We used to think the world was flat, scientists and people of the time, and they thought that you could actually, um, you know, when you got to the end of the world or the earth. It would be like a big waterfall and you would just plunge to your to your death <laughs> um, and you know folks like Columbus and, and others you know thought otherwise that the earth was round and you could actually sail around um, the world so a lot of science you have to be open to new ideas um, you know science will grow when you're open to discovering new things Scientists um, also need to have good imagination and creativity. Here's kind of an example of that. 
um, Andy Michael was a, is a seismologist, also a musician, and he made a connection with music and, and earthquakes. Um, and he wrote um, he wrote a song. The song was called. Um, Earthquake, Earthquake Quartet Number One, and in the trombone part of the um, of the video, it simulated the tension that builds up um, in the earth before an earthquake. There's tension that builds up in the crust, and then that tension is released. So, using his creativity, his musical ability, and his knowledge of seismology, was able to kind of tie those two um, together. Scientists also have to have intellectual honesty, or basically need to be honest. Um, I'm going to read something to you out of the book, um, because it's, it's very well written about some scientists that actually lied and were not honest. So it says, scientists must also demonstrate honesty. Imagine what would happen if you lied about the results of your experiment, and other scientists thought that your results were true. Something like this happened in 1989. Two groups of scientists were, were researching cold fusion. The goal of cold fusion is to join the nuclei of two atoms at low temperatures. If cold fusion were achieved, it would create cheap, limitless energy for the world. One group feared that the other group would publish the results first and, be, and become famous. So members of the first group wrote an article claiming that they had achieved cold fusion even though they had not. So what will happen too is scientists will try to duplicate your experiments, duplicate your science, and if they find out that it's bogus, if it's if false and it's, it's a lie, then you know you will be found out and you will be discredited. Um, but it, you know, it could cause problems. So intellectual honesty is, is very important in life and science for that matter. And ethical, I think this one's gonna gonna wrap it up. Yeah. Um, ethical responsibility. So, you know, animals shouldn't be harmed unless um, they really, you know, desperately need to to be to um, to test something, so we try to um, uh, not cause harm to animals, uh, cause harm to other people, cause harm to uh, the planet. So ethical responsibility is, is also important. So thank you for, for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow in class.